Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Chandrasekhar, and uh, we are going live uh, today morning uh, on uh, discussing uh, effective public speaking skills and uh, how can we all become public speakers. Now, before we get started, uh, this is going to be an audio check. I would uh, request if anyone listening to me are already tuned into this live now to just put in a comment over there and say that uh, the video and the audio both are uh, perfect. So can I get some uh, feedback from the viewers please? So those of you who are viewing, I would request you to comment and say that the voice clarity is good and you can all see me. Good morning Murudula, can you hear my voice correctly? One more time to all the viewers, I see, okay, Deepa Suresh, very audible, thank you very much. Yeah, great. Uh, so we'll just wait for another couple of minutes and then we get started and I see the viewers are building up now. So let's wait for maybe two, three minutes. So it's 11 o'clock now on my clock. So maybe 11, three, we should start. Good morning, uh, Deepa. Thanks, Summer. Thank you very much for the feedback. Thanks, Murudula. We are waiting for uh, 11.3 to get started. So those of you who joined just now, uh, please uh, hold on. We are going to start the Facebook live session on uh, effective public speaking skills in the next two minutes. These are very tricky times for all of us. Uh, we are all uh, locked down uh, in our homes, in our cities and uh, we are not uh, free to move around physically. But uh, having said that, this is an amazing opportunity for all of us to explore our online presence. I must uh, actually congratulate Roots Collegium for uh, taking the lead in connecting with all the students and also the stakeholders of Roots uh, through this platform and uh, this is a great uh, initiative and I really really congratulate uh, a dear friend Mr. Padala for uh, taking this lead as well as the entire staff members and team members of Roots Collegium to put this together and when I went on to this uh, Facebook page this morning uh, as I had to get prepared for this Facebook Live, I saw that uh, this is happening almost on a daily basis. I see some uh, professionals and uh, some intellectuals coming and sharing perspectives on different subjects with all the students and uh, the stakeholders. I really appreciate that and I think learning can never stop and this is one such example where we are 
able to further that learning and sharing of knowledge of information and we are trying to stay connected during these times all right so it's 11:3 and we are starting the facebook live on uh, effective public speaking skills and uh, once again my name is chandrashekar and uh, i am the ceo for uh, jain group of institutions and uh, the past district director of uh, district 98 for toastmasters international those of you who have heard of toastmasters before you know that it is a public speaking and a leadership organization based out of uh, united states of america but having presence across 140 plus countries as we speak and i must put this on record that even the roots college is a toastmasters club and uh, their club is quite vibrant and quite dynamic uh, a little bit of clarification is uh, my name is just chandra shekar and i don't have a surname of chandra shekar jain i work in jain group of institutions my organization is called as jgi group and i am the ceo for jgi schools that is the jain group of institution schools so that's said let's get started with uh, this facebook live now we are talking about effective public speaking and we have got a lot of things to cover under public speaking but don't worry we are not going to cover the entire gamut in this facebook live we are going to get started take baby steps and try to get slowly but surely into becoming a better version of ourselves as far as public speaking is concerned how does this facebook live go is since it's a one way communication where you all can see me and you can hear me but i can't see all of you and i won't be definitely hearing any of you i would request each one of you to put in your comments put in your questions on the comments column because as i am talking to you i should be in a situation to also read through the viewers feedback viewers comments and your questions if any so that we can discuss them online rather than visiting it once the show is over so feel free to put down your comments there as we go forward so friends all of us know that the one thing which is most feared in the world today is public speaking there are different statistics which bring out and say that public speaking is the most feared fear in this world and there is a joke which goes around a popular joke which says that if there are two options option 1 i need to give a eulogy to somebody who has passed away or option 2 i need to be the person the dead body inside that coffin many of us would prefer the option 2 rather than giving the eulogy which is the option 1 that's a joke but think about it for a second what makes people choose option 2 it's the fear which is created by us in our own minds of being judged of being measured by people who are looking at us and let me clarify this right at the beginning public speaking is an art as well as a science science gives us the confidence and art makes us an artist in making our expression communication that much more effective so if we are equipped with the science part of public speaking and the art part which varies from people to people style to style i think that's a good step to get started so on that note i want to talk to you firstly on the science the science behind giving a speech every speech whether you make it for a minute or an hour or a day long program every speech should have a purpose and you may be surprised when you hear the next part of it every speech should have only one purpose when i say only one purpose i clarify 
it should have just one purpose you may wonder oh i have a lot of things to tell people and i make them i mean i note them down and then i go on stage i want to read them off and how is that going to happen if you say we need to have just one purpose let me give you an example now if i want to educate people about the importance of wearing a helmet while driving a two wheeler i may give 101 examples n number of scenarios or case studies or statistics but all of those should add to be value creation as far as that purpose is concerned for the audience so when i say that when i mean that i should say that the purpose of that speech is to only create an awareness about the importance of wearing a helmet while we are driving a two wheeler so friends let's pause here for a while and then go back and reflect on having one purpose for every speech that's my first point whether it is a one minute speech or a one hour speech or a one day speech let's focus on having one simple single purpose how do we try to touch on different aspects i will come to that in a while how we can build our speech with different supporting material we'll do that but then please put this very clear if you are taking notes every speech should have a single point agenda or a specific purpose having said this let's go to the next step every speech in that purpose can be having four different varieties and this is what we call as the general purpose of the speech while your specific purpose we have already spoken about in terms of okay i need to tell people the importance of wearing a helmet while driving a two wheeler now the general purpose of this that is the flavor or the genre of the speech can be either to inform or to persuade or to inspire people so you can either inform people you can persuade people or you can inspire people now how do you want to do that is up to the art of the person when i say art of the person it is the style of the human being or the individual who is speaking now for example some of us are very good at putting out numbers in front and if we put out numbers in front or if we put out examples in front maybe that will be a good way to persuade people to consider your point of view some of us are very good at reporting facts telling it as it appeared so that way you can be a very good speaker when it comes to informing people and some of us are extremely good in giving the leadership or demonstrating leadership some say i never leave my home without a helmet now that is inspiring somebody to take the right action because they are able to see they are able to connect with you and that's how you become the inspiring individual before the audience so we have covered so far every speech should have a specific purpose and the overall flavor can be either to inform people or to inspire people or to persuade people this is the first part of it now if we have covered that every speech has a purpose and every speech can have a different flavor or a genre next move on to the next part on the next part we'll talk about how can we build a speech but before we get there i want you all to take a minute and reflect on what has happened so far and if you have any questions if you have any comments i would strongly urge all of you to put those comments there so that i get a feedback about how are we doing so far so friends
feel free to write your comment if you feel it was valuable so far just give me a thumbs up if you feel you are able to follow me just say yes and if you have a question or a comment just put that in i'll wait for you guys to put those comments while i just sip a little bit of water All right, as the comments take time to come in, let's move forward because I will have just another 44 minutes to complete this session and we still have substantial content to cover. Now, we go to the next part, which is how do we build a speech? And how do we build a speech? Any speech can be divided into three simple parts. First being the beginning of the speech. The second is the body of the speech. And the last part is the conclusion of the speech. The easy way to remember is remember British Broadcasting Corporation. That is BBC. Beginning, body, conclusion. We have all heard of BBC, so I'm sure that's an easy acronym for all of us to remember beginning, body and conclusion. Now, let's take the first part of it, which is the beginning. When it comes to beginning, you have multiple options. Remember, that's the first part of your speech and that is where we all have this great opportunity to capture the audience attention because let me tell you a little secret those of you who are feeling that we are scared to go on stage and we are going to speak and make a fool of ourselves forget about it and why do i say forget about it is because as much as you want to do good on stage your audience also want you to succeed on stage. Just ask yourself a question. How many of you, when you are sitting in an audience, want the person who is coming on stage to flop or fail? As much as you don't like the person on stage, you would never want that person to flop or fail. That's human. We all want the person on stage to succeed no matter what they are performing. They are giving a speech, they are giving a sermon, they are singing a song, they are playing music, whatever they are performing, that's the minimum, minimum, minimum respect an audience gives to the performer. So forget about the fact that people are judging me, people want me to fail, people are bullying me. No. You have this fear in your own mind that what happens if something goes wrong? And that fear, as you go up on the stage or as you prepare yourself to go and speak, becomes very big and so big that it becomes bigger than you. And that's the reason you take the back step. So, if you want to tame this fear, the trick is preparation. You got to be prepared. And that's where the beginning part comes into picture. Why and how? You know what you want to speak and you know you have this much time to speak and you know you have to speak. That means you got to have a beginning. That means you can prepare the first 20 to 30 seconds of your speech beforehand. You can prepare the entire speech but let's stick to beginning for now. So when you can prepare the 20 to 30 seconds of your speech beforehand what can you do you can use multiple tools to have a fantastic opening tool number one you can begin with a quote for example 
A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And today, I am here to take that first step in front of all of you. Or, you can begin with a statistic. Go back to that example of helmets and say, in Hyderabad, in Telangana, in India, one third of the deaths which happen due to road accidents are because of people's negligence and not wearing a helmet. Now that's not an exact statistic, I just quoted it as an example, but the fact is, the statistics can be very powerful and attention grabbing. Third, you can tell a story. So tool number one is a quote, tool number two is a statistic, and tour number three is a story. You can give a very, very powerful short story which kind of sets the audience and then you can continue with your speech. So your beginning can have any of these tools. But when you are experimenting, when you are learning, my sincere advice will be use one tool only. Don't try to mix up with multiple tools. We will get there in some time and we will be able to play with a couple of tools at the beginning. But now as starters, if you are starting, use just one tool at a time. So that's the beginning part. Now what's the objective of the beginning? Two objectives. First, grab the audience attention. Get the attention of the audience. And two, Tell them what you want to tell them. Yeah, you heard me right. Tell them what you're going to tell them. What are you going to tell them? You're going to tell them the specific purpose which you have identified beforehand. Remember, each one of you have a topic. Each one of you have a purpose. Each one of you will have a reason to be there. Tell them that. You can tell them directly. That's the simplest thing to do or you can tell them indirectly using these tools and then bring their attention to that particular topic. But the objective of a beginning is simply these two things. One, grab the attention and two, tell them what you are going to tell them. That's the first part. Now let's go to the second part. And the second part is about the body. Now what is a body? That's the meat of your speech. Suppose you're giving a five to seven minute speech, for example, your beginning should not be more than one minute. Your body will be for the next four to five minutes. And your conclusion will take the last one minute. So that's the kind of a graph in terms of availability of time and appropriation of time. So one minute for the beginning, four to five minutes for your body and one minute for the conclusion. Now, let's go to the body. When I have said four to five minutes, that's a long time. Let me tell you this. On an average, you need a hundred words to speak for one minute. And especially beginners, you need 140 words. Why? When you are on stage and you are a little nervous, you end up speaking fast. And that fast will consume a lot of words and add to it that you forget some lines in between, then you need more content. We'll come to that later. How do you handle stage fear and other things in some time, but let's stick to the body of the speech. So the body of the speech can be organized into simple three steps. Yeah, the body is further organized into three simple steps. What? Main point, supporting material is the first step. Again, main point, supporting material is the second step. Main point, supporting material is the third step. So you must be wondering, are you joking? You are telling the same thing three times and you are saying it is three different steps? No, I am not joking. I am telling you that your body should have not more than three points 
with supporting materials. So let's stick to that example of having a helmet while you are riding a bike. So you say, okay friends, now that my purpose is to tell you the importance of helmets while driving a bike, let me tell you three reasons why you should never ever give up on a helmet when you are driving your bike. Reason number one, it will save your life. And then you give a supporting material. You know, out of the 118 accidents which happened in Hyderabad from January 2020, 72% of them are alive and survived because they had a helmet on. That shows that the chances that the helmet can save your life is more than 72% if not less. So that's the main point and the supporting material. Second. The second reason why I want you people to have an helmet is it also protects you from the pollution around. And you can talk about the supporting material of how the pollution levels are rising in the city and how you need to protect yourself and take care of it. And the third reason why I want you to have an helmet is that's your social responsibility as a citizen of this nation. Because human beings learn by imitation. And when I see three people on the road without a helmet, I will be tempted not to have a helmet. But if I see the three people having a helmet, I will stand there at that signal and reflect, oh, I missed having my helmet today. So my three reasons are, one, it's a lifesaver. Two, it will save you from pollution. And three, you can be a leader, a citizen leader. So what did I say? I gave three points and I gave three sub points. That's your body. Now if you expand this, it will occupy that four to five minutes. So the body should have three steps, which is three points. That is what main point with supporting material, main point with supporting material, main point with supporting material, all of them aligning to the purpose what you are speaking. Are we clear so far? I want you to take maybe a few seconds to reflect on it and then we will continue to the last part of it in terms of conclusion. You have comments, you have something to give me as feedback, please feel free to type in there at the comments column. All right, so now we have come to the last part of our speech. First was the beginning, second was the body, and third is the conclusion. Now, what do we do in conclusion? We tell them what we have already told them. Yeah, you tell them what you have already told them. So, let's me, let me make it more clear. You have started with your purpose, that is at the beginning, with a quote or with a story or with the statistics. Then you went ahead with the body, which is three main points or three reasons why they should listen to you and follow that. And then you come to the conclusion where you tell them what you have already told them or in simple other words, you summarize. All of you remember when we write exams and answers, you say in conclusion, and you will say the same thing on many of us, people like me and you, who are very smart in the class, we write the question back again. Because the question will say, what are the three objectives of whatever? And say, in conclusion, the above mentioned points are the objectives of whatever. So you actually conclude by that. Even in a speech, you end up doing the same thing. You tell them what you have already told them and you conclude. So in summary, and then you finish it. But that's too boring if you just repeat the same thing, right? So you can make it a an interesting conclusion. How can you make it interesting? You tell them what you've already told them. That's first part of conclusion. The second part of the conclusion is where it becomes interesting. And the second part is where you call for action. What is call for action? 
okay you have heard me you have given me 5 to 7 minutes of your time what do you have to do after this you bring in the call for action there and how do you bring in the call for action you bring in the call for action by one telling them what you have already told them and two asking them to do something for you in this context when you are talking about helmets either you can ask them to say that they all will not leave their helmets when they go out on their bikes or you can make them take a pledge or you can ask them to give you a word that they will not do it even better you can tell them to inspire at least one person to not give up on the helmet when they drive the bike so there it's a double shot one you are ensuring them that they have to wear helmet but you are also asking them to become propagator of your message so the call for action becomes that much important in the conclusion and it will make it that much more interesting so remember this conclusion has again two objectives one to summarize what you have already said and two to call for action so if you if anybody asks you after this webinar or facebook live if anybody asks you okay so what's about public speaking what is so great about it what is public speaking effectiveness i'll give you a simple thing one every speech should have a purpose and two every speech should have a beginning body conclusion and the best way to remember this beginning you will tell them what you are going to tell them body you will tell them and conclusion you will tell them what you have already told them yeah it is quite confusing if you hear it once but you hear it again you will understand and i am telling you after 30 minutes of speaking to you i am sure you understood beginning you tell them what you are going to tell them body you actually tell them and conclusion you tell them what you just told them sounds very simple right now that's the theory part or the science part now the art part what is the art part okay we know what goes into preparing a speech we know that the speech should have a purpose and we know that the speech should have a beginning body conclusion but how do we do it the problem is there the problem is we all know this now that we have heard you we know it but how do we go there and deliver a speech so i'll give you five simple techniques how each one of you can deliver your speech right ready for it so if you are ready then i need a thumbs up i need a thumbs up there because i have been speaking into this camera for the last 30 minutes without hearing a single comment i can't continue to do this okay water has saved me for some time but i need you also to interact with me so give me a thumbs up or give me some comment where i know that at least few people are listening to me because i don't have any clarity as to whether i am speaking to the wall or i am speaking to people there live okay i'm i'm getting the thumbs up there i'm getting the likes thank you so much i really appreciate that thank you so much great so if you have any questions please do that please put those questions there i would really love to take some questions in the next 15 minutes by the time i conclude this particular part in terms of how do we go on stage and deliver a good speech now the first thing the first thing is your stance or is your uh, posture when i talk about stance or posture what do i ask i am talking about when you go on stage how do you stand normally we don't think we don't realize we don't understand the importance of it but let me tell you that's one of the most important thing which will make you more confident to deliver your speech so a simple thing when you go on stage body balance is important so balance the weight of your body on both your feet yes balance the weight of your body on both your feet stand on both legs it might sound very trivial but you need to do it because you observe the next time you see somebody speaking they hardly hardly they stand on both legs they'll be leaning on one leg they'll be moving the other leg 
they'll be trying to fiddle with their legs and that causes a lot of trouble when you start to speak so stand on both your legs balance your weight equally on both legs that's the first thing second thing that's about your lower body first part the second part is your upper body stand erect stand straight that means your spine should be straight it should be perfectly straight because when you have a straight spine your chest is up your chin is up and you get the correct view of your audience so your chin is up your view is in front your spine goes up so stand on both your legs is step 1 divide the body weight equally step 2 spine straight step 3 yes ara good morning uh, venkateshwar lu hi indra good morning all of you good morning thanks for joining i am talking to them about the art art of delivering a speech so the first step is balance your body weight on both your legs second stand straight chin up chest up look straight third third is very 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 important your hands what do your hands do and majority of us don't realize what do we do with these hands when we are on stage and that puts us in problem gentlemen especially try to put these hands in their pockets and fiddle with things which they have in their pockets and when they have that on their pockets they are distracted and they are distracting the audience so and ladies you have different ways to do it you try to set your hair or you put your hand back or you try to fiddle with what you have in your hands no simple there is a technique which we follow and you all can follow this to help you become better public speakers your hands should touch each other like this if all of you can see it on the camera your hands should touch the fingertips like this okay i'm just moving it so that you all can see it but you don't have to move it when you're speaking and this needs to go in front of your name in front of your upper part of the stomach right you are holding it comfortably please focus on my shoulders here i have put my hand down on near my stomach in front of it and look at my shoulders my shoulders are not shrugged my shoulders are relaxed comfortable because you don't have to hold it too high where your shoulders are shrugged or you don't have to put it too low and you have a problem right so you need to hold it comfortably and hold it very comfortably and touch the tips of the finger the reason i say this this is your default position when you are speaking when you are speaking your finger should your hand should be here now it is very natural for anybody you don't need to be a professional public speaker it is very natural for humans to move hands when we are speaking to make gestures now with this position you are at a better place to make those natural gestures you put it in your hand you are stopping yourself you are touching something here or you holding something you are stopping yourself this is the default position for you to be comfortable when you are giving a speech so that's the third thing first stand comfortably weight divided both both legs two spine straight chin up and look straight three resting position of your hands four most importantly eye contact and when i say eye contact you may wonder i am already scared i am already worried how am i going to look into the eyes of people yes that might come some within some time it will take some time to be there and reach there fine But what we need to do is we need to spray our eye contact on the audience when I, when i say we need to spray our eye contact on the audience all of you know the letter z you need to look at your audience in that format z so you start with the last person there move your eyes as you speak 
to the last person here and then diagonally cut across the room to the first person to the left and then to the last person to your right. So basically I drew an imaginary Z in my room with my eyes. What happens here? What happens here is you are not only getting comfortable speaking, you are also looking at people and giving them the assurance that you are talking to them. Remember this, there are two ways to speak. One, talk at the people. Two, talk to the people. What I am doing now is I am talking at you because I can't see any of you. I am just talking, talking, talking. But what we need to do in real interaction is talk to the people. I mean, I can't keep talking. See, now I'm talking to you. Somebody wants, uh, I mean, somebody wants to pick up the pen which has fallen down or somebody is trying to ask for help. I don't know. I am talking and I don't make sense to that person at all because that person has already lost me and that person is busy with their work. But when I'm talking to people in the audience, I can't afford to do that. If somebody falls off or somebody drops something, I need to take a pause. I need to be empathetic to that person in my audience. And that's where talking to the people becomes important and that's why the eye contact part becomes absolutely important. Alright, so the fourth step is the eye contact and you do an imaginary Z in your audience, in your room. Now, the last part, the fifth part, you may find it very, very, very silly and simple but that's the truth in fact before i tell that i want to tell you this quote that's one line which sets everything straight or rather that's one curve which sets every line straight and that's a smile you got to smile this is not a rocket science question when you look at people and you smile 9 out of 10 times, you will get back a smile. And what happens? That's an agreement between your audience and you that both of you are getting comfortable. Especially to you as a speaker, it will do a world of good because when you see 5 to 10 people right in front of you smiling back in a pleasing, pleasant way, your confidence rises up and you are better prepared to deliver that speech. So, you got to actually make that effort to smile. Yes, initially it may sound very, very artificial, but with practice, the smile comes naturally and that's when the empathy, that's when that bonding happens between you and your audience. So the five things which you need to do to deliver your speech in an effective way is one, stand straight, divide your body weight, two, Spine straight, chin up, look straight. Three, hands in a very comfortable resting position with the tips touching each other, fingertips. Four, Z, an imaginary Z through your eye contact in the room. And five, smile. These are the simple steps you need to follow if you want to feel comfortable when you are speaking in front of people. So here I stop because I have covered the science of speaking in public and the art of speaking in public. So I try to stop here because that much content in one shot is not good for anyone. Because as much as I can give you theory, as much as I can give you content, what is more important in public speaking is practice. Preparation is this part, practice is when you go live, when you do it and remember this, perfection is good to strive for, perfection is never attained. When I go back to this video and I look at it, I will find out 101 ways if not more to improve myself and let me tell you this, I have no shame in accepting this. Every time I go on stage, I learn. Every time I go on stage, I commit mistakes. 
every time i go on stage i get ridiculed by my own self when i look back and reflect on what i should have done and what i did not do but then that's what learning is we learn by doing and let me tell you this towards the end before i get into questions towards the end remember this one line and this is my favorite favorite line i do this in all my uh, sessions and workshops i try to say this on my facebook page csk speaks in my ted talk i have mentioned this but i want to do this now stage time is divine time you got to respect it stage time is divine time and i have a reason very very logical reason why i say this why stage time is divine time is because when you go on stage and assume that you are addressing 50 people and you want to talk to them for 5 minutes you are not just consuming 5 minutes of your time you are consuming 5 minutes each of those 50 people and that means all of them could have done something better in that 5 minutes but they decided to give that 5 minutes to you and that is where you have a higher responsibility in that context my friends i say stage time is divine time right so this is where i want to stop in terms of the tips and the techniques of public speaking i am now open for questions if you have any questions please type it in there and let's have a conversation and i'll try to address as much as possible while i go back to the old question already comment there if there is any let me see from amit patel and amit says every speech should have three points or we can add more points i suggest if your speech is less than 10 minutes keep it only to three points three supporting points i mean one main point that is the specific purpose and then three supporting points but if you have an r with you you can make more points right so you can really make more points if are with you amit i hope i have answered rajesh hi okay rujita says what is the best way to practice public speaking this has happened to me my very first stage performance has failed and then i am very nervous now you cannot judge yourself with one act you give yourself a better chance and the simple way to do it is take up the next opportunity rujita i tell this as a friend the first time i went on stage i didn't even fail i didn't even qualify i had to narrate or recite a folk song and i went there on stage and i froze i said the first three lines four times in the hope that i am going to remember the fifth one the fifth line no i failed i didn't even qualify but that is not going to stop me from giving another shot you didn't like one dish which you ate today will you stop eating tomorrow i think there you got the answer so give it another shot practice take up the next opportunity and you will be there okay roots is asking what will be the first stage to practice the public speaking the first stage to practice today is your facebook go live and tell what you feel share and then watch back first is your instagram story that's your stage public speaking does not mean you'll go on stage and you'll talk to thousands of people at one shot no public speaking is how you express your thoughts you want to say something have you succeeded in saying it that's the first step in today's times but once the lockdown is over 
you have multiple other things as i said there is a toastmasters club i think there are 70 plus toastmasters club in this city you can become a member and you can give your speeches and practice there is this uh, uh, what is that um, speaker club or uh, in sikandrabad i remember young young orators club of uh, sikandrabad yocs yocs you can go there or there are multiple other places where you can celebrate or uh, you can uh, try to speak colleges you have inter colleges competitions and class events you want to give a presentation that's a good place fests these are better places in companies in offices you want to talk to a group in a picnic in a get together do that i mean you look for it you will get it the problem is we don't look for speaking so we don't know where to speak rajesh in public speaking do we need to use indirect speech or direct speech if you are speaking to people try to be as direct as possible if you are narrating a story you can go indirect if you are trying to create a dialogue in the conversation you can go indirect but as long as you are speaking to people try to remain direct because they need to understand the first person's perspective can we say public speaking is about expressing ourselves on use precisely mr prasad absolutely bang on it's about expressing yourself and giving your views in a manner where people can comprehend uh uma madam nice to see you here what are the things you worked on to get ahead for the second time okay you mean uh, when i failed uh, narrating that folk song right so let me let me try to recollect and tell you the real thing because this was in my grade 8 i think 7th or 8th grade so let me remember mm. i think you know the most important thing which actually helped me to go back to the next time was my class teacher because i remember soon after that incident i ran into the sports ground and i was sitting there on a bench weeping crying as to why did i have to even go there and make a fool of myself in front of everyone and now the minute the competition is over all of the school friends are going to come and make fun of me and ridicule me but before that i remember my teacher yamini madam she came she put her hand on my shoulder and she said it's okay if anybody asks you what happened you tell them that i didn't even sing so i didn't even qualify so i have not failed i just did not sing and i did not even complete the race so if i complete the race then the question of whether i won the race or not will come into picture i did even complete the race so where is the question of me winning the race and next time focus on completing the race forget about winning focus about completing the race i think these words actually played a big part on my life because the next time when i went i did not bother about winning i focused on completing the race i said i have a speech to make i will deliver the speech whether people will make me win or i lose it that's the different thing to handle and today we are not discussing how to become champions today we are discussing how to become effective public speakers can group discussion also be termed as public speaking absolutely i mean every little word which is going to come out of your mouth through those lips is speaking if you have people around you and if you are in a group discussion that's as good as public speaking because there you may have to express your views in a subtle and in a very simple manner where the group thinks you are adding to the discussion so you need to understand so one important thing which i want to tell you is understanding the audience is very important i think through this point i want to make that clear that any time you go on the stage know your audience and you know kyc right know your customer the banks have done it aadhar has done it know your audience know who you are speaking what duration you have to speak what is the topic on which you have to speak where are you speaking and when are you speaking are you speaking after somebody before somebody morning session afternoon session evening session now i think these things can be discussed in another session the do's and don'ts of how we can go and prepare ourselves as a professional speaker i don't want to get there but the point is group discussion also can be termed as yeah
I have kind of uh, seen all the questions so far. I will please put on the comments. I'm trying to pull and see as I like. There is every possibility that I would put on. I'm sorry for that. But if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. I will definitely answer them in the next few minutes. What I have. All right. No more questions. You can see. And uh, let me tell you this. Even after so many years of me speaking, I'm not saying that I'm an expert, but I'm also trying. But even at my TED Talk stage, all of you who are watching this, you can go and type "Right Way Leader TED Talk." Uh, you can see it on uh, YouTube. It's uploaded by the TEDx Hyderabad thing. Even there. i faulted with so much of practice with so much of exposure so it's ha it happens see they say right to fail is human but to give up is not divine so you will fail you can fail and you might fail that's okay but you not try you not working towards it you not considering it i don't think there is an excuse for that so keep that in mind friends great rujita i rujuta right i like uh, what you said here and i really really wish that you take up the next available chance and go for it because as i said to fail is human so no problem go for it all right friends and uh, all of you who have joined uh, this facebook live i really appreciate your time i thank you for this opportunity i sincerely hope i have added some value and some tips which can come in handy for your practice and for you all to become effective public speakers once again i thank roots collegium for giving me this opportunity mr padala thank you very much i really appreciate this gesture stay safe stay home stay connected and if we want more we can talk about public speaking skills in a different window but as far as this is concerned i am really really happy to connect with all of you and to speak to all of you this morning take care and have a great weekend i am going to log out now thank you very much one last thing is the best part about this video is it's going to be recorded and it's going to be available so you can use it for learning you can use it for sharing with people those who could not join this and you can also come back to this video any time when you want to refresh your memory because i am going to do that and i sincerely want and wish all of you also can do it thank you once again take care